So, um, getting into a bit more detail now about what you would ask of the people who make response, who have responsibility for making decisions about funding and policy, both at top funding body and government level, but also top the people at the head of universities mm -hmm. and research institutions and things. What specific things can they do with policy, um, funding decisions, that sort of thing, that would help move towards this bright new world that you'd like your students to? Um, so this probably would be a somewhat surprising answer. So I, I, I'm not generally in favour of mandating um, specific forms of openness in any form at all. Really? Um, Even open access um, research publications? Well, to a certain extent for open access research publications, but again, so so I'll, I'll come back around on that. So, so the way I generally argue this, um, and I think this, this makes sense at the level of university vice chancellors, heads of research councils and government, is that we have a public investment. In some cases we have a private investment as well, and we can make some of the same arguments for private investments and public investments. But if we start with the public investment. Um, as research funders, our role is to discharge a public trust in maximising the return on that investment. And we can have legitimate arguments around what those returns should look like and what time frames they should occur over. Um, and, and we can have legitimate arguments about how the strategy to deliver on those, um, those should proceed. Um, and that's fine. You know, all, of, all of that's good. What I think we, you, you can do is ask, ask higher level questions around, given an output or given an outcome, how can you maximise the potential public good out of those um, outputs and outcomes? Um, and the answer there is that if we focus on, um, if we draw impact, research impact very broadly um, to include all the potential kinds of economic impact, social impact, health, cultural, educational and research impact. So we're saying broadly speaking, you know, impact broadly drawn is what we're trying to maximise. And it's not, it's not a very popular word, but I think it's probably the best we have for that kind of... We want to take research outputs and turn them into outcomes um, that, that make a difference somewhere. Um, and I don't, think, I don't think anyone's going to argue against that viewpoint in a, in a, in a broad sense. Um, so, so how do you maximise that? And you maximise that by ensuring that research outputs are created and published in a form which maximises their potential for reuse, which maximises systems for discoverability, um, and that ensures that downstream reuse is maximised. And the availability part is easy. Um, the reusability part is easy. You use open licenses. We know how to do this. We have the legal and technical infrastructure to do this. Um, in terms of making things public, there are some technical issues on how best to do that and how to develop discovery mechanisms that actually get people to the right place at the right time. And those are difficult but not impossible. And they'd certainly be aid the development of those would certainly be aided by having more stuff out there. To do. I mean, you don't make Google work better by taking pages off the web. Um, they work because they've got a lot of data to work with. Um, if we put more research on the web, there'll be more for people to develop the right kind of search engines. So I think we can see, it, we can see a route towards um, better markup, better structuring, better systems for making stuff available. Um, and that's a, that's a work in progress. Um, and it's, I think the paths down that route are relatively straightforward. You know, we need good data management systems, we need good semantic technologies that don't bother the user all the time, um, and we need good discovery tools. So we have the legal infrastructure, and we know pretty much how best to make results, outputs, data, text, images, video, reusable as possible. The slightly more difficult question is the one of maximising reuse. And I think there's a, there's a balance here, but if you talk about it in terms of maximising reuse, then we can, ex 
we can stop having the philosophical argument about open versus closed and we can start having the functional and pragmatic argument around well for this kind of data for this kind of research actually we do need to patent this because otherwise we can't get the investment to develop the drug for instance or for this kind of research to make sure we can do it in the future it's really important that we keep this data private um, because otherwise the downstream research won't be able to operate or for, for whatever reasons but you can have those specific discussions in a framework that isn't a theological argument but is actually a, a question and it's a scientific question what is the most effective way to maximize reuse um, so and the same thing I think is true at some level of, of institutions so institutions have a, have a slightly different problem um, they need to work up their brand, they need to have visibility, they need to maximise the effectiveness of their researchers in getting exposure, creating impact, bringing in, ex bringing in additional funding. Um, unfortunately, they also have a slightly tighter constraints because they're not interested in the whole system. Government and funders are much more interested in the system as a whole, um, so they can take a wider view. Inst so for this to work at the institutional level, you have to create markets, meaningful markets, that um, optimise institutional behavior um, so as to maximize the global outcomes um, and that's a harder thing to do but again you can still make the argument to vice chancellors and PVC's research that you know you need better data management to support um, your researchers to work effectively um, you need better internal systems of communication that help your researchers discover each other to drive collaboration and integration across systems um, and you need to maximise the extent to which the research outputs you're generating are reused and that those reuses are going to be a wider set of things than just journal articles as they have been in the past. So those kind of arguments um, are what play out. And so when you come to a question of something like open access and mandating open access, if you move away from I've got my paper into nature, therefore I'm a success, to this paper has been cited, reused, generated a whole new research area, the methods have been reused here, the data has been reused here. Um, if you're, you're judging on the basis of the article and its influence and the extent to which it has been reused, then actually you end up with a quite interesting question around, around open access because you can again, you can explicitly ask the question, do I maximise the use and reuse of this article by placing it in an open access journal or in an open access repository or is the added benefit of placing it somewhere like nature or science and the publicity and exposure that generates actually going to be better for the paper not for me but for the paper and then that's a question you can ask and actually I think the answer is going to be no most of the time particularly given if we start actually factoring in the cost of what these journals are actually effectively charging, um, then I think the question will go the other way much more often than you might expect. Um, but I think you can ask the pragmatic. You can then ask the pragmatic question. Um, so the the philosophy, the o the open philosophy, is a is a shortcut. It's a shorthand of a way of thinking through problems that the default answer in most cases the most effective way to do this is to take an open approach broadly, broadly drawn but there are going to be cases where that's not true um, and we need to think those through and we need to find them and we need to understand them um, so so the focus for me is the drawing a link between the need to demonstrate impact and importance in redefining impact to be a very broad set of things and then linking that effectively if we're going to measure this to, to the measurement of the reuse of research outputs the influence the, the the downstream reuse and using that as the measure by which we judge whether a particular research output has been successful or not because it's really a question of aligning aligning more effectively the interests of the funders the people within government who are arguing you know, our case to Treasury for, for funding and the researchers and institutions. At the moment people are pulling in different directions um, but actually the 
there's a if we can align those interests more closely, then I think a lot of this will follow naturally um, and will be essentially impossible to resist as well. Uh, to move to the brave new world that you hope you were moving to, um, if I could wave a magic wand. So this isn't so much a really practical next step, but what would... We had one wish. I think if I, if I had if I had one wish, it would be that the we'd solved the technical user interface problems involved in making all of this easy. Um, the problem with all of these at the moment, it's just hard work to put stuff up, um, mark it up correctly, put it in the right place write the text around it, all of these things, they all take work. And they take work beyond what we normally do in our recording process of writing something in a paper notebook. Um, to a very large extent, if it becomes the easiest way to make it accessible to yourself, if when I walk from the lab to my office, the easiest thing for me to do is for it just to be pushed there so then it's accessible to me. Um, then we, then we make the whole record born electronic. And at that point, I think we, we're then on an inevitable road to making more of it available earlier, and that will just happen. Um, at the moment, the biggest stumbling block, well, I, there's a kind of a stumbling block at the other end, but the biggest stumbling block is pushing stuff easily in a simple way that people can easily use. Um, into a system which then can make this available. There's a problem at the other end about consumption, but if we do the collection properly, then I think a lot of the consumption problems go away as well because it means that it means that computers are doing all the collection and categorization and therefore everything gets standardized and the consumption becomes easier as well. And so it's the and it's really the user interfaces. It's we, we it's not it's not the technical frameworks. We know how to build these things. Um, maybe not perfectly, but we, we can build things that would work if we could just solve the problems of um, the interfaces that people are interacting with on a day-to-day basis in the lab, at their desks, um, at home, and, and make all of that work well for them and work together.